Dear friends, welcome to an evening of courses program on day 6 of Asian Literary Society's Novels 2021. As you know, the Asian Literary Society's annual Novels 2021 festival is a 9 days online festival of art, culture and literature. And today here we are going to two eminent poets who will be reciting in an evening week of courses program. So this session will be moderated by Vanna Kasim who will also be reciting her poems. I will quickly introduce Vanna Kasim. Vanna Kasim is an ex-banker, tech writer and artist based out of Kurukram. She is a published author and recipient of numerous prestigious awards for her literary contributions. A few notable among these are Sri Atal Bihari Vajpayee Award by Anvita Foundation, Women of Influence Award 2019 by Garnet Gold, Wordsmith Award English Poetry 2019 by Asian Literary Society, Prasanna Jena Memorial Award by Asian Literary Society, she has been long listed for Women Achievement Award for ALS in 2019. She also won second prize in ALS Wordsmith Award in English Poetry 2020, Certificate, uh, Certificate of Excellence for ALS Wordsmith Award for Hindi 2020, and third prize for ALS Sagar Memorial Award 2020 for Children's Literature. Her debut book, Roots Walls, awarded Best Debut Poetry Book by ALS in 2021. She was awarded Dr. Sarapalli Radha Krishnan Award by Arpita Foundation in 2021. Now, over to Vanna to moderate today's session. Thank you so much, Manoj. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to uh, Navarasa, uh, Navarasa Festival, an evening of courses. Um, today, we have with us Professor Nandini Sahu and Dr. Subhashri Parigrahi. Poetry has a way to reach one's heart, to touch the chords. I would like to start with a few words in honor of poetry that has actually brought us here today. Scattered words, labyrinth of thoughts, emotions overflowing, all woven together in soulful verses. Some reflections, some amusing, some voice of the masses, some call of the destitute, some echoes of solitude. Some words that bring hope, some verses that touch the soul, some poems that scatter light, a world where words be wondrous right. I welcome you all to a wonderful evening of verses with Professor Nandini Sahu and Dr. Subhashri Panikrehi. Today we have we are at the day six of Navarasa Festival. Uh, this is the second edition of Navras by ALS, and I must say that it is a very unique kind of uh, uh, event in itself, with where we celebrate the nine dress, the no, nine emotions as listed out in Sanskrit. And uh, though we all know, you know, what these nine dress mean, but I would still like to, you know, uh, just spell out what are these. So we have Shringar Ras, Hasiras, Karuna Ras, Rodra. Veer, Bhayanak, Vibhatsya, Adbhuta, and Shanti. Today we are celebrating, I, I don't know whether I should call celebrating, but we are actually, uh, you know, um, talking about the Bhayanak or the fear or the terror today. So before we can actually move on, I would like to introduce our eminent guests today. Uh, Dr. Subhashri Panikrahi would be joining us in a while. In the meantime, I would like to introduce Professor Nandini Sahu. Uh, Professor Nandini Sahu is a major voice in contemporary Indian English literature. She has been widely published in India and other countries. Apart from numerous other literary awards, she is a triple gold medalist in English literature. She has received the gold medal in year 2019 from Honorable Vice President of India for her contribution to English studies. She is the author and editor of 15 books. Presently, she is the director, School of Foreign Languages, and professor of English at Indira Gandhi National Open University. She is the chief editor of Interdisciplinary Journal of Literature and Language, a biannual peer-reviewed journal in English. Welcome, Nandini, ma'am. It's an honor to have you here with us today. A few words from you, ma'am. OK, yeah, thank you, Vandana. And uh, thank you, Manujji. Manoj Krishnanji, you all are doing wonderful. And, uh, such important programs have been following your page, and I see that every week you have been inviting uh, people to, to discuss different varieties of things on social issues, on human emotions, on psychological issues. Actually, there is no subject that you have left as of now. 
and now i see this wonderful navarasa festival and uh, today i would be reciting a few poems uh, some of my maybe on the uh, out of nine rasas i will be covering five and wow. uh, uh, yeah so i'll try to cover five rasas if you if you permit me to give the time uh vandana has already discussed about uh, the navarasas i don't think that i would be repeating those mm -hmm. the nine rasas Uh, that reminds me of uh, the seven kinds of ambiguities and also the the, the humors the comedy of humors of english literature that we talk about the different human emotions but look at our indian literary scenario look at our indian poetics we have vividly discussed our natya shastra and our indian poetics we in, we have discussed the nine important human emotions and there is little bit of difference between the line of difference between the uh, different rasas so uh, today uh, uh, i would not be focusing on the on single rasa that uh, that uh, is the theme today uh, rather i would be trying to cover four to five emotions and the one would be adbhut rasa rasa adbhut but i will come to that later we start with some very short poems uh, one of the uh, well, this is my new poetry collection it's published only last week uh, so let's go in Well, thank you. <laughs> so, selected poems of Nandini Sahu. This is volume two. Volume one was published in winter 2020, and this volume two it came in spring 2021. And uh, the uniqueness about this poetry collection, selected poems of Nandini Sahu, volume two would be, uh, well, I I was COVID positive in uh, in the month of April, I think end April and first week of May I suffered from COVID. and uh, i was writing poems one poem every day so 52 days i wrote 52 poems from my covid bed <laughs> so oh, that's how i <laughs> i utilized the time <laughs> during covid and uh, so i i am kind of deeply attached to this book because when i was writing these poems i was going through a lot of emotions which vandana would say or manoj ji would say the different rasas i was going through so many rasas some day i was so scared will i survive and some day i was happy okay i survived and some day i had the fear of losing my near and dear friends and some day i was thinking the love of my life and for whom i have written quite a few poems and this so from those poems i will take one when i am talking about the stringar rush so most of the poems in this book uh, they come under one very you know umbrella term one umbrella emotion that is a uh, humanity my connection with the human being with the human world with the higher values of humanity in most of the poems are based on love love of nature love of the human beings love of life and then very optimistic very positive emotions so uh, one poem i would read from here uh, is anshingar rasa of course uh, the title of the poem is my moods moods and moods my moods moods more and moods uh may, can i read the poem yes ma'am please okay uh so it it's it bit dramatic the opening is bit dramatic uh then i did the look and feel i can be witty flamboyant you have to master the art of handling my myriad moods i said that to the man and then he says he winked and said who oh, i see and then you held my hands gently and took me to your island of wishes smeared my body with tender yet passionate insistent kisses i had no other choice but to go for a submission all over again to your quests while i soared in you and i guided you to my unseen depths you just inhaled exhaled and discovered and the unabridged me you sighed in utter amazement sheer incredulity you marveled at my abundance love i can tell who from the who the prime mover and the admirer the victor and the vanquished in this inclined love we merged as the ocean and the rivers there was a torrential twing in the abdomen body quivered numbness in concentration i requested isn't love enough love why torment me in such profusion 
you traded virtuous innocence and interest me the wild stream then guided me to the isle where i no longer distinguished my culmination your initiation this time you giggled at the bewildered unnerved me you grafted penetratingly my moods modes and mores so this is my sringaras very beautiful ma'am very beautiful okay. totally romantic it's totally romantic yes ma'am full of love yeah and in the same same poetry collection i have another poem on karuna ras uh eyes well up how you know uh, there are so many emotions so many moments in our life when actually we want to cry and shedding tears can be contagious if you see one person crying you may also shed tears without knowing the reason true so this poem i am quoting charlie chaplin in the beginning of this poem uh, quoting chaplin i love walking in rain because no one can see my tears so this is what i am quoting and from this i am taking up the poem this is an karuna ras eyes well up in joy exertion happiness orgasm edginess expectations sulks so you know there are so many moments when your eyes will be teary right but my favorites are those that come from our never ending incessant laughters till our muscles ache and those from the overpowering emotions that i feel just by watching you love don't brood over today's tears wake up tomorrow stronger than today let's face your fears after all welled up eyes are a sign of implicit contentment and maybe a smile is the sign of some silent ancient pain tears are in a way prayers tears right. are in a way prayers tears are bottle of emotions you know love no one merits your tears and the one who deserves them will never make you cry as yes. yes. i have learned it the hard way tears are not adverse sentiments after all tears give me the material to turn hurt into forgiveness and forgiveness into love it's time we didn't cry in rain anymore so this one i am taking the clue from the quote charlie chaplin uh, this time we won't cry in rain anymore let the eyes be washed in tears so we can see life with clearer views tears are a language tears are a language they dialectically evolve love let's go hand in hand and celebrate the places we have cried in the past let's alter the narrative so this so is about think, man, this is very nice actually it's much wanted most of the times we you know tend to feel that crying is bad crying makes you weak but actually yeah. I, i feel it is very important to express your emotions and if you are feeling the pain expressing it through tears is very important i think uh, crying is should not be a taboo in us way right i mean uh, that absolutely yeah. and who who says men don't cry men do cry yeah mm-hmm. and i feel it's a very important emotion it's a very important feeling to express i mean if you are feeling the pain and if you just keep it inside then it's yeah. like you know pushing it under the carpet all the time and you know not letting it out so ultimately it will burst one day so very i really loved it i mean uh, very very nice I and mean, everyone should read it because everyone should read it to know that crying is not bad i mean it's, it's a very important thing yeah so because karuna ras crying shedding tears is not bad it can clean you from inside it can connect yeah. you to the other human being and exactly. tears tears are a language we have tears to understand are. Yeah. tears yes. are a language and language this language is our behavior isn't it yeah. thank you ma'am Then, thank you uh, manoj uh, ma- i am back to you manoj uh, uh, till the time subhashri ma'am is coming uh, would you like to recite one of your poems please
there is some power supply problem at uh, Subhashri so is clear so they completely dark the complete dark is at home so uh, once the light will come she will join us uh, Vanda why don't you uh, recite one of your poem I will uh, recite my poem in last okay sure sure so uh, since uh, uh, today's rush is fear I actually written a lot on fear but I I think in the last one year COVID has familiarized us with the you know worst face of fear as it is so I won't want to harp on that a lot. Just two, three lines on fear and then I'll move to something else. Our yes. own fears we fight each day. Some new struggles to live every day. Still we smile and move on. Standing tall with friends, no care for when. Life has become the new war game. A game we all have to win. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes. just yes. on fear. Yes. And... Uh, I'm more, I, I write more of inspirational poetry, Manoj can talk yeah. about yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's impossible for me to write something which is sad and even if I'm writing something which is sad, I have to end it on a positive note. I can't just leave the poem, you know, hanging on a crying note or something, though I said that crying is important. So um, there's one uh, specific poem of Emily Dickinson, which has been with me since my childhood. And I remember that, you know, always hope is a thing with feathers. I'm sure everybody would have heard it. Hope is the thing with feathers that perches on the soul. So uh, hello, ma'am. Welcome to Vashri, ma'am. Welcome to Vashri. Hello. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Yes, yes, you are audible. And uh, Vandana Ji is just finishing her poem. And after that, she will uh, introduce you formally with the audience. So when right. Say, right. Uh, complete your poem. Yeah. So uh, taking inspiration from the poem of Emily Dickinson, Hope is a Thing with Feathers, I have written mine. And uh, so uh, this is written in a way, the poem has been written in a way that uh, the first alphabet of my poem is follows the alphabetical rhyme of Emily Dickinson's poem. And it also follows the rhyme and rhythm of her poem. So it's totally inspired from that. So uh, I've titled the poem as The Cloak of Hope. Hope I feel in the warmth of sun that scatters vivacious hues every day. And even around when there is none, all you need is faith in today. And hope I feel in the gentle breeze as it softly nudges every part of me. The swaying in rhythm of the leaves of trees, the incessant crashing of waves at sea. I breathe in hope as I look up to him. Yes, I know there is a slope. It only recuperates my faith in him. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you. Uh, welcome, ma'am. Subhashri, ma'am, we missed you for a couple of minutes, but I'm glad that you were able to join. Uh, I, I would like to add, yeah, I would like to introduce Subhashri, ma'am. Uh, Dr. Subhashri Panigrahi is the director of Rajya Sabha, firmly believes in humanity and divinity. She's a lover of the nature and its exuberance and magnificence. She has authored two anthologies of poems, namely Panne Kashmir Ke in Hindi and Kadambaru Kurukshetra in Uriya. She co authored another anthology in Hindi titled Sakshi Hai Samved Nai. I love the title. Uh, many of her short stories and poems have been published in magazines. However, since 2015, she is mainly focusing on preaching of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Welcome to Bashuri Panigrahi, ma'am. We would like to have a few words from you on the sixth day of the Navaras festival organized by Asian Literary Society. Namaskar. Thank you, Manoji. Thank you, Vandana ji. And I love to see Nandini here. This is our first interaction here, of course. Uh, and this is a great evening. I'm sorry for uh, the fact that I joined late, but there are certain factors beyond our reach. Uh, no problem. And, uh, and uh, you know, uh, poem is all about expressing our feelings. Ras, ras itself means mellows. Mellows is deeply related to bhav. What bhav we have got. And that bhav is again related to the relationship samband so ras because it is navras so i am relating ras bhav and samband so when we are having relationship with everybody every living being 
that means we are feeling the pain the happiness the pleasures of the entire creation so uh, the poet the poetess holds the entire infinity in the palm of her hand and wow. she feels the pleasure and the pain she feels the moments others are feeling and that is how we are indeed experiencing that quote vasudhai va kutumbakam this saying of upanishad within ourselves within in our heart so uh, what a poet writes that is universal that is not momentary that is not meant for this generation or the past generation or the future generation it is for all times i remember the first line of a poet that is when poet is first poet on this earth balmiki wrote for the two couple birds who were crying for each other when one was dying the other said ma nishad tomagama saswati sama yad krauncha mithuna dekam mavadhi kama mohitam so that this itself shows that you know in feelings are universal the melos what we are deriving out of it that only can be ex experienced by a poet because poet has got empathy for others that is how we start this poetic evening today and i will recite two poems if you allow me two poems sure, first yeah very short poems and uh, written in english of course um and uh, very simple conversational language uh, the the theme is strive for food strive for food food for belly food for senses food for mind burning desires non stop search for food that is what we mean by life for that all the struggle for that all the strife in the wake of endless wishes we strive to acquire more and more those all perversy pains make each other each one of us suffer the small kills the smaller the big is gnawed by the bigger in the efforts to satiate incessant pangs of hunger satisfaction remains elusive unreachable forever this shows the permanent discontent that is burning us that is killing us that is becoming the stress factor within us in contrast i'll go to another poem which shows just the opposite of it how calm we are how blissful we are how we are experiencing the happiness of life and we feel the pleasure that we simply are alive and we are enjoying every moment the second poem is today with mercy the title is today with mercy today with mercy i have awakened from slumber slumber symbolizes ignorance too when we are awakened that means we are awakened to the knowledge to the light and the darkness is removed from our heart here i am saying today with mercy i have awakened from slumber to a fantastic morning to a fantastic morning i have tasted the rays of sparkling sun the cooling breeze the nectarian rain the sweetest honey from the flowers i got drenched in bliss and praised almighty for hours this is my second poem and i hope you liked it and mm -hmm. now i am if you allow me i can read a small poem again this is if things went wrong if things went wrong mostly it's meant for the young generation they feel the hardships and this is the difficult time actually the most troublesome uh, period we are experiencing in our life during this pandemic we all are confined we all are cocooned we don't have a space to share our ideas with with, with others and the young generation they are feeling the stress and uh, my poem is if things went wrong if things went wrong don't feel the same don't feel embarrassed if you have tried your best then whistle your victory song if you have tried your best then whistle your victory song life is curvy little high and little low here move fast there it's slow zig zag criss cross and round about don't close eyes and despair move on and scout never ponder what you have been just think what you want to be never ponder what you have been just think what you want to be progress will be there for sure you will turn the golden key 
so nice. Guys. Never ponder what you. Yeah, I mean, I really like those two lines. <laughs> yes. So uh, the last poem is the lonely tree. This again symbolizes. This is a destination. This is a goal that we have fixed. This tree is destination, the ultimate destination. We can say, we can take it anyway. In a spiritual life, it may be our uh, divine goal. In material life, that ultimate thing that we have set as our goal. So the lonely tree, the lonely tree, eagerly waiting on the pond side. The lonely tree, eagerly waiting on the pond side, always becomes me. I wish to swim across so as to reach the tree. The pond is slithery, full of thorny vines. I could not swim across, though tried several times. Now I find the tree rooted firmly in my heart. Now I find the tree rooted firmly in my heart. The barrier of pond was no more there. None can keep us apart. Wow. None can keep us apart. Actually, I remember a line from Rumi, written by Rumi. When I run after what I think I want, my days are furnace of stress and anxiety. If I sit in my own place and with patience, I wait what I need close to me and without pain. From this, I understand that what I want always wants me too. It is looking for me and attracting me. There is a great secret in this sentence. And I hope everyone would grasp this. Thank you. Awesome. In short, when I, Rumi has said, you know, what you speak is speaking you. It's just the gist of that, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. Wonderful, ma'am. Very nice. It was really nice Thank to you. hear your thoughts. Coming back to Nandini Sahu, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, you were about to read another poem of yours when I interrupted you. Can you please uh, uh, yeah. have a few? Yeah. Yes. So yes. we have a few lines from you now. You're right. Uh, so this uh, poem is uh, titled Ahilya Waiting. Ahilya, the character, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, so she turned into a storm uh, and she is yeah. waiting to be by Lord Ram. And yeah. then this poem is based on Shantaras. So she has come to terms with her predicament and she okay. wants something in her life. That is what uh, is, the, is the theme of this poem. Uh, uh, so initially, I am quoting something uh, from uh, Gautama's curse. Her husband cursed her when you know she she was with him. Indra. He came he came and cursed her. So I am quoting this. Ahilya's waiting. Ahilya, you will live yeah. here for many thousands of years, thousands of years. And generating. In a heat, invisible to all creatures, you will live in this hermitage. And then Ram, who is unassailable, comes to this terrible forest. Then you will be purified by receiving him as a guest. You will become free of greed and delusion. You evil woman, and you will take your own form in my presence, full of joy. So this is a quote from Gotham. This is how he curses her. Now come back to Ahilya. He called husband Rishi Gotham's command, bestowed upon the beautiful wife Ahilya, who had just had her first ever orgasm, the fulfillment of her womanhood through Indra in disguise of Gotham. Ahilya, the one with no ugliness. The woman beautiful turned into a stone then and there. Reek of patriarchy with the social game of victim blaming began. So now she became the victim and she was only blamed. So this is the introduction to the poem. And then Ahilya is saying something. I am Ahilya. Am I really waiting since centuries for my salvation by just a touch? And for my redemption, I have the indrias, the five senses inside me, so solid that I cannot be transformed to oblivion. I am as innate as a stone. While my accusative mind retorts, my steady mind waits 
I am the Sita Pragya Sadha. I have my Indriyas in my own accumulation. Doing my sadhana, I am time and time old. O oh, Ram, finally you are generously plentiful to meet me after ages of waiting. But my penance is not yet completed. I will not consent. I will not consent, O oh, Ram, to be redeemed by you for an offense that I have not committed. I am untamed, confident, and clean. What purity on me will you assign? What is the merit of this debate of my pollution? O oh, Ram, the archetypal Ram, if you really need to touch me, touch me as the elemental woman, touch me as the galaxies do collide, touch me with all your unspent, unbiased, Emotion. Touch me as the blue firmament touches the stars. Make me your liar and lure me. Give me harmony, give my harmony your personal touch. I assure you, you will solve the mysteries of the universe with my touch because I am the quintessential ultimate woman. Your touch should be your creative language, your behavior, your basic attitude. With my touch, stars ought to dance across your skin. Your touch must take away the fears of all Gautamas and Indras from me. Love, soothe my anxiety and fill my senses with your compassion. Touch my cognizance and you can redeem the stone. Make me your muse. You know, touch is where miracles arise and exchange of light and darkness begin. The curse of Rishi Gautam may be immobilized by your touch with this assertion. My redemption lies not in your touch, but in zero tolerance of marginalization. I need a rejoinder from the society and from you, O oh, the most knowledgeable one, for my quintuple patriarchal relegation, further presented the puppet to husband on his free will. Husband couldn't, husband couldn't fulfill me as a woman. Indra tricked me to satiate his desire, not mine. Inept, important husband cursed me with what right? Oh, with what right? to become a stone exactly at a moment when I satiated as a woman? And now, why do I need yet another man, you or Ram, to touch me and cleanse me of any uncommitted sin? Touch sensitive, touch deprived, touch waiting. I would rather wait till eternity. I prefer to reject your offer of touching me on the condition of taking me into the snares of purity pollution. I am my own possessor, proprietor. I am my own woman. Let me remain ethically upright on my own terms. This is my ultimate liberation. Such a powerful poem, ma'am. Wonderful. Very nice, very nice. I mean, I. Uh, Helia's feelings and emotions have been expressed so nicely. Very powerful, yeah. very powerful poem. Very nice. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Manoj, uh, I think we have another four or five minutes with us. Yeah, so, you, you can recite your poem and uh, then the Subhashri ji can also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can go, you all can go one round of more poems. Yeah. I think it'll be, yeah, we can wait for that. Yeah. So, um, my poem is not too long, so it won't take much time anyway. So the poem is titled Sands of Time. Uh, here again, so today I've chosen the poems that, you know, were following a little different from the normal free verse and all. So this is the poem that follows uh, chain verse or loop poetry, wherein the last word of every line becomes the first word of the next line. Okay. So um, the poem is titled Sands of Time. A speck of dust we are in the realm of time. Time that slips away from our hands. Hands that cannot behold the sands of time. Time that refuses to wait, no matter who you are. No matter who you are, you are akin to the sands in the hourglass. 
our glass that endeavors to control the time time that still cannot be held captive by the sand sand that cannot halt or change the rhythm of time time that shapes or shatters our dreams dreams that traverse in the time wheel wheel that revolves as we breathe breathe we must to the tunes of life life that is a treasure of memoirs memoirs that trace our footprints footprints that we leave on the sands of time Yeah, very very nice, nice technique you have used. Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, not many many poems on loop poetry or chain verse. If you find out in the chain verse, also there are very few, and I really like this. It's very yes, fun. It it's very fun to do it. Right. So I hope yeah. it, it makes sense. It's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Subhashree, ma'am. Coming back to you, would you like to recite one more of your poems? Ma'am, you're yeah, muted. Okay. it just uh, makes me remind my childhood days uh, it's not my own uh, own poem it's not written by anyone but uh, it's like um, combined memory of the entire society i can say the credit credit goes to the entire odia lifestyle yes. uh, because okay. i i am from odisha so i just remember my childhood days this lullaby my grandmother used to sing for me uh, Uh, just few lines you will enjoy though you will not understand yeah. the exact meaning of it because it's odia but it's great actually uh, okay. there are certain things we are inheriting those katha tie kahu katha tie ki katha ki katha bengo katha bengo means actually frog it's little frog okay ki katha bengo katha ki bengo katha bengo ki katha telli matha ki telli ghana telli ki ghana nak chana ki nako suang ko nako suang means parrot the parrot's nose it's very prominent so it's all about little little uh, uh, little little animals and birds and it the look poem is uh, uh, framed on the basis of that ki nako suang nako ki suang rajang ko suang ki raja khanda khaja ki khanda jhada khanda ki jhada kanta bado ki kanta kankoli kanta jahi lagi thai jhatta pata <laughs> so it's a music for years <laughs> yeah 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 so uh, i mean every child enjoyed this from uh, listening to the lullaby from the grandparents so it's a good so we are also able to understand it fast yes ma'am you are also able to no i was telling that i was also able to you know understand it partially the words were you know i mean i was yeah. Like yes, very yeah. few words were relatable, so it it was very nice to hear. I mean, yeah. it was music for you. Actually, years. you know, like what we are not, uh, not we are that today we got everything within ourselves. We yeah. inherited from the past. So this is yeah. how the poetic uh, poetic tradition is. That is why I started from uh, um, Balmiki's first two lines of uh, Ramayan. How he mm-hmm. wrote Ramayan. how the feelings are universal how the expressions are also universal and the the style also in which we are uh, expressing today very true very like true. great poetic tradition yes ma'am manoj uh, i wouldn't spare you without reciting one of your poems so please okay uh, so uh, when i was talking to you i quickly copied one of my poem from uh, facebook uh, yeah, well, so again uh, yeah this is not as intense as uh, and as full of uh, philosophical thoughts as you all have recited so mine is very simple uh, again it is a, a love poem i should say so the poem started is road to haisan haisan is a city in north uh, korea okay so every day she watches him Cycling on the road to high sun, does she crave for his gifts, or he also notices her? I have no idea. Perhaps her desperate heart must be going beneath this leaf. Embers of passion will be smoldering. Her face has turned pink in the cold breeze, and eyes are wet. Poor heart urges the eyes, but they are reluctant to shed pain. The soul emerges in love, craves to celebrate the emotions, but every journey doesn't finish at the desired destination. Wow. Like this road to high sun, many have trodden the path of love, but 
all dreams don't turn into reality in this elusive world. Still, travelers cherish its unforgettable journey and splendor, be it past, present, or future. Its irresistible charm is forever. When he crosses the road, sweet memories replenish her mind, and she resolves to come again as his games brings her smile. Who knows, the handsome boy would also be thinking about her as there is another short road, but he has not chosen that ever. The mind is shuttle, it plays with the delicate string of emotions and feelings need a spark that turns them into conflagration. Perhaps one day he would stop to feel the warmth of her love, maybe he will propose her to accompany on the road to high sun. Thank you. Very nice, very nice. Full of desire and love and emotions and also telling us, you know, all roads, we, I mean, there was some line that said, right? But we do not get what yeah. we desire. Yeah. Wonderful. So it was a mix of everything. Yeah. Thank yeah. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we are almost uh, reached the timeline. It was a great pleasure to host this show and it was a great pleasure to read my poetry and listen to your poetry. It was wonderful catching up with you, Nandini ma'am, again. And it was so nice to hear your words and thoughts, Subhashri ma'am. Thanks a lot to Asian Literary Society and Manoj Krishnan for organizing this show. And uh, the uniqueness, uniqueness of the show, the numbers that we are maintaining over all the platforms, uh, be it poetry, be it, be it art, or be it on performing arts. And I'm uh, really, I mean, I'm really surprised that, you know, at, at all the platforms, there are so many participants and everyone is enjoying. So thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, thank everyone. You so much, yeah, thank you so much, Vanda, for wonderfully moderating today's session. I'm so glad that okay. Vashriji and Nandhiji also graced the occasion with their August presence. You know, and we are actually very honored uh, that these uh, two eminent personalities uh, accepted our request. Thank you to all the audience that they patiently, patiently listened to our recitations, and uh, soon we will be uploading this recording on the YouTube. Tomorrow we'll again meet with new uh, panel and with new topic in next dress. Thank you so much to all of you. Thank you, Vanna, Swashriti, and Nandini. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank, Thank you so much. Have a great weekend. Thanks. Thank you.